Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, I'm going to discuss the process of reverse engineering any two to two and a half dimensional component for profit. Now guys, whenever we start reverse engineering for profit, we want to validate first that the component we're working with is not already patented. We don't want to have any financial liability suits. So again, execute caution, do your research. There are millions of products online that are not patented, and you can definitely use this format to get you some products in your store very quickly. The big thing here we want to do is really cover the simplistic terms of doing this without going into you know special equipment I realize that there are digital probes out there that you can use again I wanted to keep this in the simplest form I get messaged weekly about what products I should put in my store and how do I get into a business and you know what do I recommend them sell um, I have end users message me that all the time and that's why I wanted to do a video because once you guys see this video and see how powerful it is you can apply this to your own store and whatever genre you're looking at selling in and it'll all make sense then. So I'm going to cover in detail what I'm using and again it's totally up to you however I try to keep things as basic as possible. First and foremost, you're going to need a, a graphical editing software. I use a Vinyl Master program. It's called Vinyl Master Pro 4.0. It's a very, very good program. Again, it allows manipulation of pictures, so you can do graphics. I do graphics on the side, which again, all of all a CNC cutter is, whether it be for graphics or router or mill, they're all the same format. The great thing about this software I love is that it exports in DXF, SFG, SVG, excuse me, and PDF. So again, file formats are based basically covered all throughout. Big thing here you can see I want to fabricate a drone component and what I'm looking at here is a carbon fiber piece of um, it's basically just a, a washer but I wanted to take this washer and convert it into a format of a usable component that I came up with. So again it's very basic nothing major. What I'm going to do here is take this white background I just shot this on a white background and again you can choose whatever background you like I like white because it's very easy to remove once I do that I'm going to show you the shape I'm actually shooting for that's a single square this is the shape I'm actually shooting for and you can see I made just individual squares here they're all the same I just zoomed in you can see I got the zoom at 523 because these are tiny once we have this, of course, a square like this, you can easily measure. So the size format is going to be based on what you're able to measure physically. We have to use common sense. We want to make sure you're going to scale these appropriately to what you're going for. In real life, this component stands in at a half inch. You can see up here, if we look, the width and the height is at 0.657 inch, so we know this has got to be altered. We also, if we validate the components here, you can see all four of them. This is the shape I'm going to complete when it's complete. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete these because we don't need it. I just wanted to give you a visual appearance of what I was shooting for. Once I delete these, you can see I'm left with the one square. Now what I want to do is if you look at this, you can see the rough edges on the square. We definitely don't want that. We want to clean up the unit and make it proper in the sense of it being ready to be machined in a professional format. So what I want to do is grab a square here. And what I'm going to do is take this. And you can see I'm just dragging the square over the edge of the actual geometry. I've added this square over it. Now I'm going to select geometry behind it and I'm going to come over here and select punch out and basically use it to punch out this section of the geometry giving me a clean edge. I'm going to produce that same effect three times and it does not matter how big the square is. You can go over here, over here. It's just as long as you grab the edge you're good. Select the background again, come to punch out, do the same thing. And we're going to do the same thing again. Now guys, I know there's a million different types of software out there. This is what I prefer. You can use whatever you like. But again, you can see just how easy this is. I'm going to just repeat the process. We we'll do it one more time. And now I just sit punch out and there we go. Now my edges are all clean. So we have our square. We're all done there. Now what I want to do because I removed so much you can see we're still not out the half inch mark, which is what the full scale piece is in reality. I just square that up. I then come over here, square that up. Now we have a perfect square, but our circle in the center is all wonky. I already know the size that I want to go with, so I select the circle geometry. I then come over here and I scale it to what I want, which is 0 0.130 inch. We want to make sure that's square. So we come over here, 0 0.130 inch. And now she's square. Now what I want to do is center this. 
in the location of the square as the physical one is that we took a picture of. You can see it's represented here, but it's it's wonky. So what we want to do is just come over here. I'm going to select this issue, this uh, second piece of geometry again. And I'm going to go to my line tools, and I'm just going to select that. And this software does something that's really neat, as you can see. You can see it's got the align center as I'm leaving the cursor over a function. And it'll show you exactly what it's going to do when you click on that function. You can see it's got that outline in red of where the circle will be once I click the align center and now you can see exactly where the hole is going to be it centered itself around the square and we're set the next process is I want to put this hole in this actual square it's just a shape right now the geometry is not a hole so once again I'm going to select the two components which I did already and I'm going to select punch out now I have the component I want it's centered exactly the circle and we're also now at the geometry scale level that we need which is half inch by half inch now what I'm going to do, and you can see this is all one piece, we don't really care about the carbon fiber effect. That's just the picture format that we took. Again, you can execute this with any shape you like. If it's a RC car chassis, if it's a two-dimensional component, again, you're going to have your whole locations and everything there. You'd execute the same functionality depending upon, again, what kind of software you're using. So what we're going to do is I want that four, I want to make that uh, four whole piece an inch by an inch. So what I'm going to do is select duplicate. Now I made two of these. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come over here and I can move this anywhere I'd like. I know that it's already a half inch by half inch because we already confirmed it on the first component that we've, we've designed. I'm going to select the two of them and I'm going to come over here to space and I've already got the spacing set up by half an inch. So if I come over here you can see it's going to move that directly to the edge of this. It's perfect and how I know it's perfect is now the width is at one inch. So I've already confirmed that the width is correct. Everything there is looking proper. I'm going to then select that component, select this component, and I'm going to go to alignment again and I'm going to align them vertically so that they are now perpendicular square. Everything here is perfect and we're looking good. You can see the edges are all set. We're almost at the shape we need. We're going to come over here and I'm now going to group these two objects. Right click, select group, now I've got one object. Now I'm going to come over here and go duplicate again. Done. Now I'm going to come over here and I want to do the same thing I did on a horizontal format to a vertical format. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to say space it out. I'm going to go vertically. Boom, that's done. And now I'm going to come over here to alignment again. And I'm going to select the two components to get these in alignment. And now we're done. There's the shape I wanted. And I took that created that from this, removed the background, took the individual shape, made the shape I'm now after, and now what we want to do is create this into a solid configuration. So what we want to do is select everything. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to weld everything together, and you're going to see the texture in the background of carbon fiber disappear, and it's all going to become one solid shape. Geometry is now created. It is scaled properly because we could see width now is an inch, height is now an inch, whole location is scaled correctly at 0.13 inch. Everything here is set. I reverse engineered, actually, I actually didn't even reverse engineer, I created a new component. However, reverse engineering, you would do one, so you'd be set. You guys see exactly where I'm going with this. Now, the key format is taking this image and converting it into a DXF, which is as simple as coming over here. We go to export, I go file. I then come over here to, uh, it's actually already in my documents new folder, you can see DXF AutoCAD. If I select down here and do the drop down, I got DXF, AI, BMP, DXF again, um, and again you've got AutoCAD here, you've got AutoCAD here, I don't know why it's listing it twice, but either way it is. We have EPS, JPG, PDF, PLT, PNG, SVG, and TIFF. Now the SVGs, PDF, EPS, and DXF are probably the most common types of files that are easily read through CAM software. So just keep that in mind on whatever graphical program you're going with. You always want to go with something that, again, is more readily available for your type of software you're using. Once I do that, I select which way I want to go. I'm going to go DXF, and I'm going to go Drone Bracket. Just real simple. And we're pretty much good there, even though I misspelled Bracket. Let me correct that. We're good. Now we'll go Save, and everything here is good. I'm just going to 
shrink the software. I'm going to co come over here to cut to D. Now, guys, this is the most basic Vetric program available. It's CAM software that runs typically about 150 bucks, and I'm just showing you how simple this is. I did. I wanted to use very easy to attain software, very cheap as far as CAM software. This is probably the cheapest. Um, again, if you're doing more elaborate type software, you're going to be set. The big thing here is that we're only doing two-dimensional cutting. So again, cut to D is really all you need to start making money. Open an existing file. You can see here we do have the drone bracket DXF. I'm going to double click on it, and there's the bracket we just reverse engineered from a picture. Actually, we engineered it again, but um, either way, you see exactly where I'm going with this. You can then put in the thickness of the material. You can then put in whatever width you'd be cutting it in, with we'll say 10 inches, and then we come over here, and we say 10 inches, and again, if I wanted it to be an inch thick, which in this situation I don't, um, Again, you can go in and edit all the format you want. You can then scale this whichever way you want it to. Um, set object size. Uh, we know in real life this is one inch. So you would just come over here, change your dimensions, apply. You can see now it shrunk it down. We click apply. Now she's done and close. And now we're going to come up here, select the item once again, which actually it's probably already selected. It looks like it is. Move selected object. It is. And we'll center her and we're done and that's basically it i mean that's that's really what it what we've done if we do want to do create a tool path we can profile the tool path then we'll come over here and we can do that whole format of selecting what profiling create profile and then you go in your tooling and do all that but either way you've guys just seen how easy it is to reverse engineer from a picture. The big thing here to consider is what tools you're using. This software that I'm using runs in at about $300. It's not super cheap, but it makes the process very, very easy. Um, if you're dealing with just general graphics software, the thing to keep in mind is the capability of the software, how fast you can learn it and how fast you can manipulate things. Again, the faster you can manipulate things and the quicker you pick it up, the more parts that you can do. But you can see just how easy it is. If I wanted to just cut this shape out, I could have did that, but I wanted to alter the shape in general. I can now fabricate this part out of virtually anything I want. And being the two file formats are compatible with going from vinyl software to CAD, CAM actual CAD software, you can see to cut it out is virtually as simple as and as quick as maybe a 10 to 15 minute format, depending upon what file and what software you're using and how well you know it. So again, reverse engineering, this is the technology we're dealing with. Um, China has been doing this. Full-scale factories use this method a lot. Um, it's a lot quicker to do this to do prototyping, but I'm going to tell you right now, if you dial in the accuracy and you measure the components properly, reverse engineering for profit has never gotten as simple as this. So again, I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you guys have gained a lot of knowledge with this and come up with some great ideas because I'm telling you right now, if you start shopping and just go online and see some of the two-dimensional items that are available, you'll find out really quick that there's just a ton of money to, to, to actually be had, especially, like I said, I if you shop on eBay at all and you go through, and I don't know, I mean, most of the time, a lot of my guys are dealing with RC or whatever parts you're dealing with in a two-dimensional format, something like this, where again, you have bends or any three-dimensional type bending, you'd have to deal with a much thicker component, but if it's flat stock, something like this, this alloy chassis, very, very simple to do. Very, very simple to do using the same process. Again, the length is the same, and you're ready to make some money. So, again, it is what it is, and something like this, I can you can rest assured, is not going to be patented. 98% of all RC stuff is not patented, so you'd be usually pretty good to go there. Again, validate as you go, but you'll be good. Hopefully, the video has been informative. I hope this has helped you guys, the guys that are trying to get you know profitable with their machines. This is the fastest way, guys, unless you want to invest in other tooling. Again, if you have any type of picture editing software, you can do the exact same thing. Um, just make sure your picture editing software does export to DXF. Some do, some don't. If not, you can always go with uh, a vinyl program, and it'll do the same thing. Again, remember, vinyl is made to take and manipulate pictures and graphics. So it's doing the same thing. It's just converting it in a different file format, which, again, as long as it's compatible with your, your mill or router, you're ready to make money. So again, thank you guys for watching. I hope it's been informative. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Take care.